Dude, we're, we're jumping right in. We are. <laughs> okay. A law is something we observe in nature mm -hmm. based on the evidence. Like you just see a pattern. Mm -hmm. You just see a pattern. Something, I drop something, it falls with the exact same acceleration. I drop something else, it falls with the exact same acceleration. You drop a big thing, it falls with the exact same acceleration. A law of gravity, right? Mm -hmm. You uh, look at the relationships between pressure and temperature. You get the laws of thermodynamics. These are born out of experiments and repeated observations where you've done these experiments so many times, it, you're pretty sure it's going to happen again. So those are the laws. Laws might change as we learn more, of course, but they're based on a bajillion repeated experiments. And they kind of, they kind of stand on their own, like they're just bare statements about nature. Like just facts of the universe. Right. And it's the theory's job to explain the underlying motivation of those laws. Attempt to explain. Attempt. <laughs> and sometimes succeed. Hey, come on. Sometimes we do succeed. We, sometimes we do. So the theories are, okay, here's something we observe in nature. Here's why. Here's what's going on underneath the hood. Like when it comes to the laws of thermodynamics, those are just flat out statements like, you know, two objects, you know, in contact will reach equilibrium. Boom. You can't go below absolute zero. Boom. You know, entropy will always decrease. Boom, 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 boom. Raw facts. Right. The theory to explain that is something we call thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. It is why like why those laws happen to be happen to exist we have law of gravity of you drop things and it's uniform acceleration okay mm -hmm. we have newton's theory of gravity and einstein's general relativity as theories to explain that law mm -hmm. i'm done you're done was that good enough yeah was that was. good enough so so yeah so uh, and, and so can laws ever help? I'm getting hot. I'm, I, getting I know. Up. I, I know. So can, can theories ever help modify a law? <sighs> Tweak it a little? Usually theories and laws go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Where a law is more on the experimental or observational side, and then the theory is on the theoretical side. So when you look at, say, uh, you know, the laws of thermodynamics and our conceptions of statistical mechanics and thermodynamics, um, those were happening hand in hand. Like we were developing explanations for the physics at the same time we were coming up with the general rules of how things work. Okay. Okay. So um, gravity is, is still a theory, whereas the universal law of gravitation is is a law right it's an observed fact of nature that there is this thing that attracts everything else mm -hmm. to each other love and also <laughs> gravity <laughs> um, so there's this there's this fundamental law mm -hmm. and then we have okay why what's going on what makes this thing a thing right because it could have been anything else. Why is it this? And so we come up with lots of math, lots of smart people involved, smarter than me. Mm -hmm. uh, and you end up with like people like Newton and Einstein saying, this is why. This is why. Because of the, the dynamical warping of space time, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And, and so it's in that voice, too. It, 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 exactly in that voice. And, and Zulu, Mike, you have such great questions. If you don't mind uh, repeating. Paste, copy and paste, or if you remember what you asked right out the gate, because that was a great question. Um, and it's too far in the scroll, it's man. It's so far back. I mean, he, he just came so in with like really scroll. good questions right right off the bat. Um, I'm surprised that hasn't become like a term of lost in the scroll. <laughs> it's like true. it's so far back. You're like, you're like I, don't, I can't, I don't know where this is. I lost it. I lost it in the scroll. Uh, someone I'm going to start it. It's born right here. 
<laughs> it's right now, right here, right, right now. now. We just coined a new, you know, it, the 2020 word of the year. Just arrow up, just scroll up. <laughs> but you do that and you just go up and you're like, no, wait, was it here? And I'm too far. I'm like, no, they said it then. It's lost. It's lost in the scroll. And then I, then I start missing the rest of <laughs> Zendry. <laughs> <laughs> just scroll up. No, but it was a great just question. And, and he was, he came in asking really good ones. But so, um, the, what was I going to ask you though about this? Um, so there is parts where gravity, the theory of gravity does break down, Correct. Oh, yeah. We know that Einstein's gravity is incomplete. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping for a little bit more. I, I need a little bit more. Can you, can you elaborate, Dr. Paul? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, uh, Einstein's theory of relativity, which is our current depiction of gravity, mm -hmm. breaks down at very, very, very small but very, very strong cases. So if you're talking about like really tiny distances and the gravity there is also strong, general relativity cannot work. It just, it doesn't, it hasn't, there is no mathematical description of gravity in that case. So like once and you get the, closer to a black hole. Once, yeah, exactly. So the places we call this, we call these things where the theory blows up. There are locations in the mathematics where it blows up. We call these singularities. Mm. And there's a singularity at the center of a black hole. Mm -hmm. What that is, it's like a little placeholder. That's like a little, little carved out space with a little tiny question mark in there. Mm. So we have no idea what's going on. <laughs> and then once you get outside that little carved out space, it's, it's general relativity all the way. Like, we can handle it. We're good. Another place where singularities appear is in the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. In the very earliest moments of the universe, there's a tiny, tiny, tiny little question mark because we don't understand the physics. Mm -hmm. And then after that is usual universe stuff. Okay. Okay. But where it's actually worked so we, out is things like when we, when we have LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. Don't say it that fast. I don't recommend it. Not just say LIGO. What does Virgo stand for? Stand for? Oh, gosh. Uh, the is, very interferometric. <laughs> I think, isn't that the, just the different location? Yeah, it's the one in Italy. Yeah, because they also, I mean, we could really say the advanced LIGO if we wanted to be really Oh, correct. it's true. It's enhanced like <laughs> E-LIGO. Right. So, so in this case, that actually was consistent with what we see when we see those black hole merges and then we see the ripples that it sends out through yes. the fabric of space time. Black holes are things. Right. So they in, exist. in that case, that does support GR. Absolutely. Because black holes were predicted by general relativity. We had no idea. I mean, there are some ideas floating around a couple hundred years ago of like, oh, what if there's a star so big that if you shot a bit of light, it would you know, the light would go up and then come back down. But that was just for funsies. Um, in the mathematics of general relativity, when you go to describe a very, very simple system, like say you're trying to solve the, the gravity of the solar system due mm -hmm. to the sun. Mm -hmm. Like, what does that look like? What, how should I predict the motions of the planets? It's a very, very simple thing. And what you find in those very simple equations, just the straight simple equations is a singularity at the center. Mm -hmm. Like the mathematics breaks down in the center. Yep. And you're like, I have no idea what's going on there, but the sun is very big mm -hmm. compared to that little tiny patch. You're like, okay, I don't have to care about that because obviously there's other physics going on in the center of the sun. There's like nuclear physics, there's electromagnetism. I don't need to care about that. I don't need to care what gravity is doing in the center of the sun because there's so much other physics that are playing a more important role. Gotcha. But what if you took the sun mm -hmm. and squished it down, squished it down, squished it down, squished it down below that critical threshold mm -hmm. where there are no other forces playing any games. Uh -huh. There's no electromagnetism to save you, no strong nuclear, no weak nuclear. You've just taken this thing and compressed it down beneath a certain size limit called the short shield radius uh-huh and there is nothing preventing that 
thing that has collapsed to that small of a volume from collapsing down to an infinitely small point because there's no other forces in nature that we know of. There's just nothing to stop. It's all gravity. Gravity took charge. Gotcha. And now you're left with all the stuff of the sun compressed into an infinitely tiny point surrounded by a shell of that critical radius, which is the event horizon of the newly formed black hole. This is a prediction of general relativity. General relativity says if you can get a bunch of stuff crammed into a small enough volume, you can make a black hole. Now, the question was, now, and so this was realized very early on, like in the 30s. The question was, can nature squish things to be that small? Mm -hmm. It's a fair question. Oh, yeah. And for a long time, we, we didn't think so. We thought, okay, this is just a weird quirk of the mathematics. It doesn't matter. You know, weird stuff happens all the time, but nature doesn't actually produce this. Something else always happens. Like you, you look at the earth. Well, gravity wants to pull the earth inwards, but you know, the earth is made of rocks and rocks don't like being squeezed. And so they hold the earth up. Uh, the sun, gravity would like to take the sun, sun and squish it down into a tighter ball, but there's nuclear fusion keeping it propped up. And so there's always these balances. But then we started looking at the most massive stars and understanding how they work. And as far as we can understand the astrophysics, when big stars die, they collapse and they keep collapsing and they keep collapsing and they keep collapsing and nothing is able to support them. And so we predicted, because all the astrophysics pointed in that direction, that the universe was capable of making black holes. Mm. These things that were predicted by general relativity, but it's like, you're not exactly sure if nature can actually, you know, has the guts to do it. And then in the 50s and 60s, we realized nature really does have the guts to do it. And then you start asking questions like, okay, if black holes are real, what would they do? You know, the stuff would orbit around them. They would warp space time, you know, the bending of light. They would merge together and emit gravitational waves. You start making all these predictions mm -hmm. like, OK, if we really think black holes are a thing, we want to test this idea. We should look for some observational signatures. And LIGO and Virgo found gravitational wave signatures from merging black holes. Black holes exist mm -hmm. straight up. We, ha we don't understand what's happening in the singularity. Right. That part, that part is beyond known physics. There's also a bunch of questions about the event horizon itself, too. But we know that they exist. Right. And we know that no events can be witnessed past that certain horizon. Exactly. So once you fall in, whoop, you can look out. You can, you can see the universe, right? Because all that light from the rest of the universe is still falling into the black hole. Mm -hmm. So you can look, but you can't get out. Gotcha. It is one way. One way trip. Um, A roach motel. I was hoping Zulu would post that question again. It was about particles. That's all I remember. Um, <laughs> it, it happened right when I came in. Uh, why does the moon sometimes appear very big? Because it's closer to the earth. Just like your because hand appears. Because it's physically getting larger. No, wait. Uh, <laughs> no, what Skyly said. Yeah. Yeah. It's called perigee. So it, if it gets like your hands perigee. closer to it's your hands bigger when it's closer to your face. Right. Look, right. Dr. Perigee, Paul? perigee, apogee, apogee. My hand is the same size. Yep. Right. But perigee. <laughs> I apogee. cropped the camera too much. I'm going to do this for an hour. <laughs> no, I cropped the camera too much. <laughs> oh, oh, do I have to? Oh, I have to put it in front of my face. You have to put course. it in front of your face. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing they told me in, in TV school. Uh, don't cover up your face. This is the money maker. Uh, okay, but I'll do it for you. Apogee, perigee. So someone just said the moon looks, looks a lot bigger near the horizon. It's an optical illusion. You can also get that distortion with uh, stuff in the atmosphere as well. Uh, you can get a little bit. It's it, yeah, but it is an optical illusion. Mm -hmm. And you can you can test this. Like when you look at the moon at the horizon, you're like, that's a big m moon, mm -hmm. like a like a pizza pie. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, you know, hold it, like, take, take a ruler, right, and measure it, and you'll measure a certain width, hold it out at arm's length, and then wait for the moon to be high up in the sky, and you're like, that's just a normal-looking dumb moon. Take your ruler at the exact same extension of your arm, 
it'll be the exact same, exact same. Yeah. It's all in here. Uh, does the atmosphere, atmosphere work like a lens then? Not quite. So what we think is going on with this optical illusion of the moon looking big at the horizon is all parts of the sky mm -hmm. are, you know, stuff in space is equally far away, mm -hmm. no matter its direction. It's just far away. <laughs> it doesn't matter if the sun is over there, over there, over there. It's just really far away. Mm -hmm. But when you stand and you look around, we have like a mental model of, of the world of we, we can see out to the horizon and we feel like we're sitting underneath a big inverted bowl, mm -hmm. like a big dome where the roof is closer here. It feels like the sky is closer directly up above, not sky, you as it, I mean, atmosphere, just to be clear. Mm -hmm. It feels like the sky is close here than it is way out at the horizon. We feel like it's different. That's like our mental model of the world. And so when you put the moon up there, straight up, it just looks like a moon. And then when it's down at the horizon and it's being the exact same size, but you think stuff at the horizon is further away than stuff straight above, right. but the moon is still the exact same size. And so it makes your brain feel like it's bigger than it ought to be. <laughs> I feel like that happens a lot in my chat. Um, so there was uh, someone, wait, uh, Mythic, actually the moon was bigger because it was at perigee, and that's what gives it that, that yes, super moon effect. it was effect. a super moon. So it was, it was bigger, um, a it little bigger, bit. But like 10%, 10%. Yeah. yeah. Hey, there, that's, that counts. It does. It like was, if, so it was, if my checking brighter. account grew by 10%, I would notice. Yeah, well, okay. I'd well, have a super account. I mean, if we're talking those kind of numbers, I would notice too. So, but you know, like, yes, you know, yeah, yeah. what you notice with that is just that you have like, you know, an increase in brightness, like 10 to 15% uh, increase in brightness as well. And mm -hmm. appearing yes, about 7% percent some bump in brightness. Yeah. Did you watch the eclipse? Oh yeah. We watched it on here. Yeah. Oh no. You were live. Yeah. Nice. I was asleep. Were you? You jerk. How? Why? I was tired. <laughs> I was very, very tired, and I think I fell asleep at like 10 o'clock. <laughs> um, sorry. I'm an old man. I'm an old man. <laughs> so, I don't have time for you, you young, foolish games anymore. <laughs> well, Fraser was up, um, so oh, he streamed it. Oh. I know. Fraser was up. Fraser's Fine. the one that – he's the one that – And that, he's older than me. I know. He's older than me. And he doesn't and like I staying get up, up late. Uh, I know. I had to get up super early, too, and it's just like – yeah. Can't do it. I know. I stayed it pretty late too. Uh, so how do black holes make those vertical jets? Usually we see that, and, and you can say if I'm right or wrong, you can just be like, Sky, you're so wrong. Wrong. Thanks. So it's, it's when they're, they are eating or devouring something else. That's an active galactic nucleus. If they're in the middle of a, a mm -hmm. galaxy, if they're not, then we would just call it black hole is eating an object nearby and they send out that high, en high energy uh, radiation through those jets. Am I right or wrong? Totally right. Oh, I can elaborate. Please do. I can. I can build on that foundation. Isn't that how we discovered story. the first black hole with that Cygnus? Yes. Yes. Exactly. So the first black hole was discovered because you know black holes are black. Mm -hmm. Space is black. Hard mm -hmm. to see. But sometimes uh, black holes will orbit other stars. Or sometimes there'll be big black holes in the centers of galaxies, and as stuff falls into the black hole, the black holes are very, very tiny, mm -hmm. very, very small. Like the size of, uh, you know, something like three times the mass of the sun. We're talking the size of a city. Mm -hmm. like, right. These are tiny, tiny things. So if it's sucking down gas from a binary, like being a vampire, imagine all that stuff, that massive flow of material compressing down onto a tiny volume. When gas compresses, if only there were a law that could tell us what would happen when you take a gas and squeeze it down into a tiny volume. If only. Any, anybody? Anybody. Come on. Someone in the chat's got to know. I'm waiting. Come on. Come on. 
Ideally, pressure, there would be volume, temperature. Uh, Chaos got uh, it. Fusion. No. <laughs> Boils. <laughs> Boils Law? It's not... Boils Law? Who, who's Boils? <laughs> no, Chaos, what you're referring to is the accretion disk where fusion can happen. It I'm can talking happen. about Boils Law. But you have to have woof. You have PV to. PV have... equals NRT. Whoa. Is it Boils Law? What? I think it's Boils Law. I don't know much about physics. I only got a PhD in it. I didn't go any further. I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. Sorry. So, so Cash, you're talking about the the fusion that can happen in the accretion disk if, if temperatures are heated up enough. Right. So that that's one way to make a nova and and flares. Right. Uh, but all, so you take this cast and it squeezes down to a tiny volume. It heats up. It glows. It glows so intensely you can see it in X rays. So you can't see the black hole itself, but you can see the X-ray glow emitted by the stuff around it. Which I'm trying to show everybody right now. Cool. Yeah, they, they, put, they put those X-ray jets in the uh, in Space Engine now, so it looks pretty, yes. pretty gnarly. So, so what happens is, to make those jets, is you have this big blob of stuff, but it's funneling into something spinning, and so it's going to squeeze down and form a disk, and then as this stuff, you want to hear the coolest uh, like jargon term? Sure. One of the coolest jargon terms? Yes. Tendex lines. I'll type it. Okay. It's tendex lines. T -E that's a stream, uh, steam jet, not x-ray. That's, that's not a steam jet. Steam jet is, is something used to clean your wood floors. <laughs> it's not a steam jet. Tendex yeah. lines. So okay, there tendex you go. lines, like flows of momentum. Uh, and energy flowing around down into this black hole, like little spirally things. And in these accretion disks, you get super strong magnetic fields. You get super strong electric fields. And what can happen is that some material, as it approaches that black hole, and it doesn't just plunge in. Instead, it wraps around. And sometimes it can wrap around and then get caught in a magnetic field line and instead of falling into the event horizon where it'd be gone forever instead spirals up and up and up and into a jet that blasts out and these are some of the most powerful things we see in the universe they're super awesome uh we see them not just around black holes we also see them around neutron stars and white dwarfs but black holes make the biggest ones mm -hmm. yeah and in this case the reason we saw cygnus x1 is because it is devouring its nearby star Yes, exactly. It's a binary companion where the black hole is eating its sibling alive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we are watching it feast on its flesh. <laughs> uh, so let's see. So is it actually coming from inside? No, this has not passed the event horizon. Right. Some of the gas does fall into the event horizon. But we don't see that. And it's gone forever. It's gone some gets trapped by these extremely strong magnetic fields and wound up and shot out before reaching the event horizon. Where's the live stream of that? Of what? Of this? <laughs> of, of, of feasting? A cannibalizing black hole? Um, huh? else, so let's see. We also have good proof of our galaxy's black hole from the orbital periods of stars around it. Um, yeah, no, we've, and so that would be the work of Dr. Andrea Getz. She, uh, was looking, using adaptive optics, looking at the center yes. of the Milky Way. And we started Also, there's a big group in, uh, Heidelberg, Germany. That also a competitor. did this. Yes. A competitor. Yeah, they're, they're the ones looking at the supermassive black hole in the center of the Milky Way called Sagittarius A star, which mm -hmm. is the lamest name ever for a black hole. Oh. One... Well, I'm first, first, I have to say the word star out loud to describe something that is not a star. Does, and apparently I'm the only one with a problem. No, here. no, no. I, I, I agree. I, I, everybody has asked me. I mean, I agree that. But how many names do we have in astronomy? They're absolutely just ridiculous. But can't we just call it like. Gorgon. Yeah, I would like Gorgon. I think that sounds like way Gorgon. cooler. Mm -hmm. super cool super cool it needs, it needs to be more metal right yeah because needs, i mean you're dealing more... with mm. yeah four million times the mass of our star i feel like sagittarius a star is not doing it justice as far as it being metal i agree 
Absolutely. Agree. It's just, yeah, it's, it's way too academic. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, uh, Sagittarius, even just Sagittarius. I mean, I know it's already a constellation, but Sagittarius is pretty cool. Mm. Maybe a little too whimsical. A little too whimsical. A little... Astrology I, ruined I see it. the chat. Yeah, astrology ruins everything. Deborah. <laughs> Deborah. That's the name of my ex. <laughs> Perfect name. I like Deborah. <laughs> Sorry to any Deborahs watching, but. Uh, Sorry, I'm a. S- <laughs> Great. Um, <laughs> Paul was thinking. I was of- thinking of Gorgonzola. I was thinking of Gorgonzola. Yep. I had a really good cheese the other day. Oh, yeah? A balsamic bellavitano. Oh, wow. Wow. It was a, it was a dry aged cheese, you know, a lot of like Parmesan, but uh, infused with balsamic vinegar. Oh, wow. Is, yeah. Mm. Cheese. Yeah. That he's already. A, there it is. Oh, uh, um, so there, God, I wish that question was asked again. I think he, he left. Um, so I was listening to something where someone was saying that we don't have really any proof that electrons exist. How do you? Whew. All right, we're going to go down that road. All right, let's go. All right, everyone take my hands. All right. Because we're going to go on a journey. Are you ready for this? I'm so ready. Electrons do not exist. My stomach just, just growled. My stomach just, just growled. That, that, your stomach growled? Yep. You should eat, have a slice of cheese. I should. Yeah. Um, no, electrons don't exist. Go on. There is a thing down there mm-hmm. in the microscopic world mm-hmm. that has a certain set of behaviors and properties. Mm-hmm. Does certain things when we poke at it. Okay. Has certain things, you know, that we measure. Mm-hmm. So we have a list of properties of a thing. There's a thing, a list of properties. Right. And then right next to it, we have a bunch of theory and mathematics to describe and understand and explain those properties. Mm-hmm. These two things taken together, the collection of observations and our understanding of what is going on and what it is taken together are an electron right an electron is our model of a thing that is happening in the subatomic world Mm -hmm. that model has changed and will change with time right we've updated our view of what an electron is over the course of decades. Mm -hmm. So if you were to say electrons exist, but then 20 years from now, we change our mind about what what an electron is, then how can it exist if now we have a new way of describing? And that's kind of the same thing with gravity. Kind of the same thing with gravity. There is a thing that binds us all together. Right, there's this, this phenomenon, love. Jeez. Right. And a, f- a force of nature. Right. Cheese is a force of nature. Cheese, my stomach is like, <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we have this big theory. So, so when you say, like, does gravity exist? Well, there's a thing in nature that we point to, and we have a list of, of properties that we ascribe to it. And we also have an attachment to that of how that thing is supposed to work. And that all wrapped together is gravity. Mm-hmm. So Same thing with an electron. Right. And so, Ludra, you said gravity is fake too, so the flat earthers are right. So it's, it's not that we, when we're talking about gravity, usually we're referring to the phenomenon that we observe and which Newton, with his law of uh, the universal law of gravitation, said... This is what I observe. This is what's happening. Yes. But why? Because and but even that, even that is provisional. Right? Even that. One day we could go, we could all go just wake up and like I'm going to drop my hat and instead of falling it's going it to shoot up to the up. ceiling. Right. It could happen at any moment. Right. 
So law it's or ob- not. It's observed in our natural world. Yes. So so it someone said all didn't, the available evidence. So didn't we someone asked if we took a picture of an atom? Didn't we take a picture of an atom? I think this is referring back to the electron stuff. Right. So we have a picture. We've taken pictures of a thing. Wait, hold it on, hold on, hold like on. I'm splitting I, hairs. Before you go yeah. on, some guy said, wait, flat earth isn't right. This stream is ludicrous. Isn't right. Oh, wait, never mind. I read that wrong. So, okay, yeah, go you're on. Good. You're okay. good. Okay. I was about to have to. So, correct. this sounds like I'm splitting hairs, but I can't. It's physically impossible for me to do so because I'm bald. <laughs> so, just I'm not splitting hairs here. I don't do that. I don't play those games. <laughs> and, so, yeah, we took a picture of a thing. Mm-hmm. There's some, there's stuff down there, right? Right. What is it? How do we describe it? What is it made of? How does it act when we poke it or shoot it with a cattle prod? That is an atom. That is an electron. Those are the forces of nature. It's the list of all the properties along with how we understand it. So don't get me wrong. The so, physical world is is physical. Right. We're going to assume it exists right. so that we can keep being employed. <laughs> right. Um. So Daddy Cupcake sent a picture of the a single glowing atom. So and he said, "Is yes. this truth?" Or sure. T- Ooh, it's pretty. Right. So it's it's when you get down to the the structure, the atomic structure, right? So I don't know. Right. I don't know why that's being posted. I guess I don't know. It, it's just. It's just. Of- it's. It's. Yeah. I want to emphasize. It's. It's a thing. Right. The lab. The word atom comes with a lot of baggage. Mm-hmm. It comes with this entire history of our understanding of the mic- microscopic world and the forces of nature and quantum mechanics and all that. That all gets piled into the word atom. So yes, there is a thing that exists in that picture in an ion trap. There's a thing that exists. Atoms are fiction. Mm -hmm. They're stories we tell about that thing. I think people get pretty upset about this. You know what? What? I don't care. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, it's weird. It's weird to think about. It's weird to think about. Um, and it's weird to separate because like we have a model of the atom based on quantum mechanics and the standard model and uh, the forces of nature as we understand. It. Mm-hmm. That could all be wrong. Yeah. All that is just mathematics to describe the observations. Yeah. And the observations themselves are subject to uncertainty and bias and measurement error. Okay, just, so yeah, in so, science, so... you just gotta be cool with you just gotta ride it out like like nothing's for sure in this universe. Yeah. You just gotta you gotta roll with it. So yeah, because everybody's like, so that's not an atom in the picture. Atoms are lies. Everybody's kinda see this is this is uh atoms are lies. <laughs> Yes. No. I'm not doubting physical reality. Right. I'm not calling into question physical reality. Right. Our observations. Which you can, if you feel like it, you, you can you can go down that road. And some people do. I'm, and some people do. I'm not going to go into. I'm not <laughs> going to take a different path. Right. Uh, and we can all be friends. Right. There is a thing there. Right. So someone said. Understand. Oh, yeah, go, go ahead. Well, someone said was, but when the observation and mathematics correlate, it's pretty compelling evidence that something exists. Mm-hmm. It's pretty compelling evidence that our model of that thing is correct or close to correct. But that model can and will always be wrong. At least in some little detail. I mean, and from- it is always update to revisions. Always. Right. And, and, and for what I understand, people love um, the standard model. <clears throat> people hate the standard model. <laughs> I know. 
I just had to. I had to. People are kind just, of. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's the standard model is like. It's. I remember. I remember learning it's about. It's like a it. house that you, it's it's a house that you live in mm -hmm. that you hate because it's all patched together and it's all duct tape, but you can't afford to move. Right. And you can't save up the money to move. So you're stuck in this house that is falling apart around you, but mm. you can't move. Mm. That's the standard model of particle physics. So Alfredo says, so an atom is theoretical. I'm slightly confused. I knew I was going to open a can of worms, but you know, at the same time, it's, it is kind of important, I believe, to understand this <laughs> to a degree. It is. It is. This is... <laughs> I mean, this is getting Don't deep into philosophy of science. It is. Break your brain over it. Break it open, <laughs> spill it all over the table, and then reassemble it in a random order. Mm. And welcome to the life of... Um, well, when you say, so an atom is theoretical, I'm slightly confused. I challenge you then to come up with a definition of an atom. Like, fill out that word. I bet once you start filling out that word and using a bunch of other words... You're going to run into some things that, you know, are theoretical, hypothetical, subject to revision, based on experimentation that has uncertainties. It's the unpacking of that word that is, you're going to have to spin a whole story, and that whole story might change a year from now. Right. So just wait till we get into things like electron degeneracy pressure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, an atom is just a bubble we'll never understand. Uh, so, well, so everything, yeah, we will never fully understand nature. Right. That's kind of, and that's the coolest part about all this stuff, or at least that I think is that we'll it's never, part of it. yeah, it's not the destination, man. It's mm -mm. the journey. It's the journey, man. Curiosity. Curiosity is its own reward. <laughs> And I agree with that now. Um, I agree. I do. I do. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. So, That's why scientists do it, all this science-y stuff, because it's fun. Right. So do you want to iterate one more time uh, the, the difference? Like, so how we're talking about theoretical versus, um, you know, a law. Just again, mm -hmm. just for anybody that's coming in and is just like, wait, so atoms for aren't sure. real. Gravity is not so real. Atoms aren't real. Uh, you know, Everything's fake. Right. The world is a lie. It's okay. You're really dreaming. Things are happening. We are trying I to understand. I, why. I hope I'm not dreaming because this is a really lame dream. It would be so boring. This would be terrible. I've had dreams I was texting people like oh, how, and emailing people. Like, how sad is that? And I woke up and I thought I got a lot of work done. And yeah. I was sad that I didn't. <laughs> You're like, I got this done. I contacted this person. We set this meeting. Yeah. yeah. I thought I had entire conversations. And I checked my email history. I'm like, no, that's still, still on my to-do list. <laughs> this is, uh, I could use a hobby. Anyway, um, a law is something that we observe in nature over and over and over and over and over again. Right. Laws can be wrong. Because we might wake up tomorrow and do the exact same observation and it might turn out differently than we thought. Right. So, for instance, like you saying, you know, here's my lip gloss. It's going to fall. So that's going to happen I'm over and that. over. Well, I the law is. <laughs> the law. That sounds really cool. The law is the law of, the law of lips. Of, lip of, of, of chapstick. Lip I glosses. I do not. Uh, yes. Um, I was about to say, I do not own any lipstick. So, so this will always fall, but we could wake up hey, tomorrow morning. common. Oh, good. So, but this, <laughs> this is what happens when you get an Don't astrophysicist on your stream. This is what happens when you get a really bored astrophysicist on your stream. <laughs> but so, I could wake up tomorrow and this mm -hmm. whole thing that I understand, the interaction between with what's ever happening with this force, right? The, the whole we can we can go into it the universal law of gravitation another time guys yep. but it could go up one day maybe who knows it could 
the universe is under no obligation to remain consistent. Mm -mm. It's no, yeah, or for us to even try to understand it. <clears throat> Which is the most surprising thing about this whole thing we call science mm -hmm. is that we're able to make any progress at all. Right. There was no, there, there was nothing on the outset saying, yeah, you'll, you'll actually be able to make headway. And that 200 years from now, you'll be asking much, much more sophisticated, nuanced questions about the universe than you were before. There was no reason. Right. There was no reason for it. Right. So that's a law, right? So that could yes. change. It could change. Yes. In a theory. And a theory is our explanation for the law. Our attempted ways of describing yes. and testing. It's all the math. It's all the, the equations that say, okay, for this law, here's what's going on in behind the scenes to make that law come about. The theory is provisional. The theory will be updated. The theory might be wrong, probably is wrong in many cases. Uh, a theory is, is the constant work to explain the law. Mm -hmm. So someone asked about the Higgs boson. Um, Higgs boson. If we're, we're not discussing the Higgs boson. Um, Sorry. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, we can't. We are not discussing the Higgs boson <laughs> no, in this no, house, no. mister. We most certainly can. I, I don't want people to think that's what we're talking about right now because it's not. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, but but we definitely can. I think people would accept, he says, or this is, if we're discussing the Higgs boson, which we're not, but we can, I think. Not. Uh, Even though we've said it about half a dozen times. <laughs> right. I think people would accept the concept of seeing something, but not actually knowing definitively that it exists. Things exist in our universe. Mm -hmm. If you want to go past the word thing and start using words like atom or gravity, those concepts are fictions. Mm -hmm. Those concepts are stories we tell ourselves to help us sleep at night, to help us understand what's going on in the world. But they will be updated and they do change with time. If you want to go past the word thing to any level of detail. Right. Um, and someone asked, order from chaos, that's entropy. I don't know what, where we're going with that. Uh, we, so we really need a unified theory. Yeah. It'd be great, right? Yes. Yeah, so uh, it'd be great. Then we could finally move into that house. Oh, mm -hmm. it's such a good house. It's, it's got only... uh, it's got built. It's got a pool. It's has the, a hot tub. It's the only time that you great, would say you want to have a great like barbecue, like kitchen island outdoor thing. <clears throat> Heated floors in the bathroom. I hear. Ooh. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. what? Yeah. You gotta. I've done the. I, I've I've been to like apartments and hotels with like the heated towel racks. Yeah. But heated floors in the bathroom. You've never. That way your feet don't get cold. Yeah. When you're going to the show. <gasps> yeah. Mm-hmm. I want heated 10 of those. Are, yeah. Uh, it's a very, very nice house. Yeah. It's the only time, and I was just saying, it's the only time that you'll be able to say, you're glad you have a gut. <laughs> yes. But a gut's not enough. No. A gut's not enough. Gut's not enough right now. So that's the thing. Like You gotta, go, a... you gotta go to toe. <laughs> it's Because we have standard model. Mm-hmm. If we can bring in, uh, and we're able to unify elect electromagnetism and weak nuclear, right? These two forces, we're able to bring them under the the same house. We're yeah. able to build that addition. If you bring in strong nuclear, it's called gut or grand unified theory. Mm -hmm. There are a few candidates out there. We're not exactly sure which is right. There's some uncertainty. And then if you can bring gravity into it, you have a toe, a theory of everything. Yeah. Yep. So, so it's, that it's the is next only level. The first step. Right. Yes. Um, it's like Voltron, like you got to you know, <laughs> put the pieces together. Power Ranger style. <laughs> um, they're updating all units. Yeah, so the, uh, the kilogram has been updated. Mm -hmm. I don't know about those other two. They're, I mean, but I'm sure they are. But um, off the rails. Good job, guys. Yeah, everybody's talking about heated floors. Um, what are your thoughts on the yeah, Anita? I don't blame them. 
on the Anita experiment, have we found something outside the standard model? It's funny you mention Anita uh, because a good friend of mine, uh, Amy Connolly, Professor Amy Connolly here at OSU, who is that way mm -hmm. down the hall and up one floor, uh, like runs the Anita collaboration. Hmm. Really? Or is a, a big player in it. Maybe she runs it. I don't know. So All I know is she talks about Anita a lot and she flies around. So, so what, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, so Anita is the balloon born Antarctica experiment, right? Mm -hmm. I want to make sure we're talking about the same Anita. Two ends, by the way. Two ends. Very, very. Okay. So just some lady named Anita. <laughs> she's a singer. She's on YouTube. Uh, she's Brazilian. Who's who, who's saying oh. this? Yes, balloon experiment. Okay, okay, yeah, so this is done. Okay, so we are talking about the same mm -hmm. thing. It is, it's down in Antarctica, and they fly a big balloon and let it run in circles in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And then the balloon has a detector on the inside, and then stuff from space hits the detector. And then after, I think, a couple weeks, the balloon deflates, and the detector crashes to the ground, and they go hike out and, and grab the hard drives and bring it back. Uh, they've done three runs, I think, and they're about to do a fourth, if I remember right. And yeah, they've got some uh, anomalies, mm -hmm. some very, very high energy particles. Don't know exactly what to make of it yet. But I'm sure Amy will let you know. I should probably just talk to her. I could probably ask her, like, what's up with this? Yeah. So a lot of yeah, people have been probably say a lot of people have been talking about the simulation stuff today. That we live in a simulation. What's happening with the simulation today? I don't know. I don't know. I just, I, I got a bunch of it in my chat, like right out the gate. Like the simulation hypothesis? Mm-hmm. That Which, we live in a simulation? Right. They're, they're, they're saying this is theory. Oh, I see. Yeah, so it's not. The simulation, I'm not even going to call it a hypothesis. Um, the simulation idea is a philosophical concept. Mm -hmm. That... Oh, if we make ever more sophisticated simulations of the universe and all the forces, then you could uh, imagine intelligence arising in one of those civilizations because you have all the physics. And if you assume we just live in a natural universe, there's mm -hmm. nothing supernatural or divine going on to make consciousness or life or whatever, then if you encode all the physics and let it run, they'll have life, they'll, they'll, they will invent cheese on their little simulated planet and they'll eat it and they'll enjoy it, but it'll all be a fake. And then they'll make simulations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So one, uh, who cares? <laughs> mm -hmm. Because uh, the world around us is still the world around us, whether it's a simulation or not, and you'll never be able to tell the difference. So if it doesn't affect, I mean, you can... If you want to run around imagining you're in a simulation, that's fine. If you want to run around imagining you're in someone, uh, somebody else's dream, that's fine too. Uh, it doesn't change the day-to-day -day of our lives. It doesn't cha change the day-to-day -day of physics or how we understand the physical world. Right. If you do think uh, that we live in a simulation, uh, so there's a couple problems with this line of thought. One is that if you say that we can create a civilization and a computer and then they can and then they can and then they can and then they can and it goes off to infinity mm -hmm. and there's an infinite number of simulated civilizations or simulated universes um if there really is an infinite number because of the way probability works you can't actually say we're one of those infinity uh, it's it's a very nuanced statistical argument, mm -hmm. but you just like you can't you can't say you can't ask like what are the chances of us being assimilated like you just can't. And if you say oh maybe there's just like a hundred of them you can only go a hundred levels deep from you know first intelligence in the real quote unquote real universe to simulations you can only go a hundred levels deep uh, then you're just making things up. Like, why 100 levels? Why not 1,000? Why not? If there can only be 100 levels of simulations, why can't there just be one? 
So right. basically your only choices are there's only one universe and you can't simulate intelligence or you can have infinity in which case you, you can't tell anything apart. You can't draw, you just uh, can't, you can't, you, you can't draw like likelihoods and probabilities. <laughs> you, you, your mathematic, your mathematical tools break down. Right. Um, Tizzo, you don't need to scream at everybody. You, you're good, buddy. Um, no, you can, you can scream. I'll scream. No. Oh, no screaming. No screaming. Uh, yeah. It's kind of annoying. What about ice creaming? I like ice cream. Okay. What's your favorite flavor? Mm, I'm kind of boring. I like vanilla. Don't let but the a haters good vanilla. get to you. Uh, do you like, is Don't that your haters. favorite? Vanilla is a good, rich vanilla with so many notes and tones in it mm -hmm. where the flavor profile changes as it goes from hot to cold in your mouth. It's yeah. a symphony. It's a symphony. Yeah. If you get a real yeah. good vanilla. Like a, yeah, like a, a really real good, good vanilla. It's like, whoo, like you could take it on a ride every single bite. Yep. Uh, no substitute. Well, there, I mean, right. you can get pretty pretty gross, disgusting vanilla ice cream. There is some. <laughs> <laughs> that can't I, and happen. Trust me, I've had some garbage <laughs> vanilla in my life. That is real life, by the way, guys. <laughs> um, but there's also something else I wanted to talk about that we're going to need to talk about what? even more is, is that people can hang out with us if they want to do the all-star party. Yes. We need to, you guys need to sign up. Yeah. Like now Let's quit talking about ice creams and sign up. Exactly. Yeah. We, we still need people, um, to, and I can bring it up here. The all-stars party. Um, that's going right to be so here. fun. We need you to register before March 1st, which means do it now. Like right now, send a text to your spouse or significant other, or if you know your mom, a distant cousin, a good buddy that you've lost touch with. <laughs> it doesn't matter. All or of your Facebook yourself. friends. Text yourself. <laughs> I do. Just so I see a little blue light on my phone every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Your dog. Um, yeah, send it to your dog. Pet's not allowed, but send it to your dog. Yeah. And just, uh, like, make this happen. A long weekend in Joshua Tree National Park at a gorgeous resort. Tons of activities during the day. And then stargazing every single night on a dark sky weekend. Like, there's, it's a new moon. New moon. Did you and do that intentionally? There's actually, in a, there's actually a total solar eclipse happening that weekend in South America. Mm -hmm. This is for all the people who can't go to the eclipse. Ooh. Like, yeah, and I wish, and like, I wish I could go to the eclipse, but, you know, you couldn't buy tickets or you couldn't arrange travel. Come party with us. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have more alcohol. Right, right. Libations, not, not, <laughs> not lubrication. Libations, not <laughs> lubrication. Right. That's. And it includes a bunch of stuff, too. So it has all of this stuff right here, four nights. At this this mm -hmm. lovely resort, and and, they, and and let me say the staff there already just working with us to set this up have been absolutely fantastic. You will be well taken care of. Yeah. Clo opening and closing cocktail receptions. Yeah. To and fro the airport. Mm hmm. From LAX. Nice. We yeah. Get buses out to the desert every night. There'll be there'll also be uh, like cocktails and snacks, maybe cheese, because you know I'm in charge of uh, out in the desert while we're stargazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe cheese. Maybe cheese. You're maybe going. Cheese. I'll bring the cheese myself. I will. I will promise. Cheese in the desert, stargazing. Uh, someone asked if I'm going. Am I going, Doctor Paul? My face might be uh, on the list right here. Your face might be on the. It page. might be right. You between. are going. You are one of our all stars. Yeah, it might be right here. <laughs> so this is a chance, <laughs> uh, one to support Skylius because she, she gets a cut. Mm-hmm. And two, uh, to hang out with all of us because we're just going to be around during the day, and we're going to have some organized panel discussions and events, uh, games and activities, prizes, door prizes. I don't know. 
we'll give something away. Ooh, good question. Uh, we have. Wait, wait, what's wait. The question. Bill asked him, uh, should or can we bring our own telescopes? You are more than welcome to bring your own telescope. We will supply. We've partnered with Oceanside Photo and Telescope, mm -hmm. which is like the world's number one distributor of telescope supplies. Yep. They're trucking out a bunch of a bunch of big ones for us, just for us. So there are going to be plenty of scopes. If you want to bring your own, you are more than welcome, and we will work with you to accommodate it. Like yep. we'll give you uh, packing tips for for airlines for everything. We'll help you out. Yeah. Cheese gazing. Cheese gazing. It's a thing. It is a thing. Now it is. It is a thing. Uh, I have binoculars. Hope that counts. I mean, it would. It would. Because there's other telescopes, too. Again, OPT would be providing some scopes, too. So. Yeah, bring some binocs, some scopes, um, some sextants, whatever you want. No way. The, wow. Um, that photo. Yeah, so this is Joshua Tree. Mm -hmm. It has very, very dark yeah. skies. Microscopes? No. <laughs> you know what? Fine, bring it. Because there's bring cool rocks and stuff. But just, you're going to have to do it during the day, okay? That's the only condition. <laughs> Joshua Tree. So this is great. Joshua Tree is an hour and a half outside of L.A. Gorgeous dark skies. I was just there last May. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful dark skies. And it's and it's uh, it'll be hot during the day, but just perfect at night. Right. Um, and, and just like he said, it's actually outside, just outside of Joshua Tree, the national park. Just outside of right. it. Right. Yeah. Our resort is like 20 minutes away from where we'll be stargazing. Right. Um, I think and, it's. Yeah. Wait, Joshua Tree still open with the shutdown? They opened it only to, to, to clean it up and stuff, I believe. I don't know if it's. Fully we're, open. we're crossing our fingers. This shutdown won't last until June. Right. So that's. It. If it's still closed, we'll figure something else out. Yes, we'll be fine. Yes. We can just, I mean, it's so dark out there. Once you get over the hills, over the mountains surrounding Palm Springs and Palm Desert, uh, you just pull off the side of the road and you're good. Yeah. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll likely be fine. I think, I think things would be turning pretty bad if, if that was still shut down. Um, the government was still shut down in, by June, late June. Um. But yeah, I think yeah, we it, might have some bigger problems. Yeah, I have some bigger problems to deal with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, just I encourage everyone to just sign up now or at least send in the inquiry form and our travel agents can start talking to you and answer questions. So if like you're interested, but you're not exactly sure your spouse is, mm -hmm. then fill out the inquiry form so that we can get in touch with you. We can answer any questions. We can hold your hand. We can help convince your spouse. Mm hmm. And this goes both ways. Like, and I've seen it happen on all these astro tours where one spouse, either the husband or the wife, it, you know, is all for this and the other isn't. We always make sure on all these astro tours, especially this one, that a spouse gets a lot out of it. Mm -hmm. If you're not super geeky into this whole astronomy thing, you will still have an amazing long weekend at this resort. Yeah. Yeah. I have to admit, if I wasn't such a nerd with all the astronomy stuff, that I would still probably be all up for that. Um, it, it's a fun trip, right? Or divorce, right? That's, that's probably something you guys recommend later okay, on. Okay. So, you know, it just, <laughs> I wasn't going to go there and maybe legal separation. <laughs> then you can each get room to yourself. Okay. I was, you know, I was just, you know, just throwing that out there just, just in case, you know, and um, then you can bring your side chick or your side <laughs> dude and just like, let's just hash it out. Um, that long weekend, we'll do we'll do some marital counseling. We could do some counseling. I was about to say, <laughs> none of us are qualified. None of us. Matter. None of us. Mm -mm. But you know no, what? I one. I am a good listener. I'm actually but terrible you are at listening. Listen. <laughs> I, I can. And with that, and with that, <laughs> we will let you go. Thank you so much. Um, and Thank we'll you. see you. We'll see you next Tuesday. Maybe. Let me. Okay, I'll look at my calendar right okay. now, and boom, you're in. Awesome. Okay. We'll see you soon. Thanks so much, everyone. All right. Take care. Great questions. Yeah. Bye.